Hey there. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about registers in Vim and how you can use them to create macros. Vim provides 26 registers. They're named with the letters A through Z. There's a couple of other registers as well, but they serve special purposes and I'm going to ignore them for this talk. Now, A through Z act as clipboards. Uh, you can take text that you would normally yank or delete to the regular copy-paste buffer and you can put them into any of these registers. So you can have up to 26 separate blocks of text that you can manipulate at will. So for example, if we start off with a little bit of text here, and let's say I want to take the word work and put it into register A. Normally, if I say yank w, yank word, I can then use the paste command to paste work, work, work as much as I want. Uh, but I can also specify that it go into a particular register. You do that by using double quotes and then the name of the register before you execute your delete or yank command. So if I say double quote A, yank the word, I can now inspect that register with the reg command. That shows me all of my registers that are currently active. And you can see there's a register named A that contains the word work. There's a couple other registers that contain work also. Ignore them. So I can do that with work. And I can take, say, registers and put it into register B. So I double quote B and yank the word. Now I can look at just register A and B. And you can say they contain work and registers. So we've got multiple clipboards we can work with here. That's pretty cool. So how do we get text out of them? Well, if you're in command mode, you can paste the value of a register with a regular paste command, and it works the same way as the yank and delete. You just reference the name of the register before you execute your command. So if I want to say registers work, uh, I can first type wb paste, and then give, me, give myself a space, and register a paste. Registers do indeed work. So, <clears throat> there's also a mechanism to access registers when you're in regular insert mode. So if you're typing in some more text and you want to access one of your registers, you can type control R and then the name of the register. You can do that when you're down in command mode at the bottom of the screen also, say you want to search forward for the value of register B. So copy and pasting is all, all and well, but sometimes you want to do something a little bit more complex, like say, store commands in registers that you can then execute later. This is a pretty cool function, and this is where we start getting into macros. So, if you take any kind of valid command and put it into a macro, you can play it back with the at command, the at sign. So for example, gg is the valid command to go to the top of the file that you're currently in. Let's say we yank that into register z, and I just deleted the line. So register z now contains a little bit more than I wanted. It contains gg plus a carriage return, but that's okay. It'll still serve for our purposes here. Let's pad down a little bit. Now I'm at the end of the file, and if I execute that register, execute with an at sign z, I go to the top and I do a carriage return. So I've just recorded a very basic macro, or rather, I've typed out a basic macro and I've put it into a register and then executed it. That can get a little bit tedious if you've got something really complex that you're trying to do. Let's say you're doing something a little bit more practical, like you want to replace the first five instances of work in this file with play. We can do that by recording a macro. So you start recording a macro by typing Q and then the name of a register. Let's go with A again. Now I'm going to search forward for work, and I'm going to change that to play. 
and then I'm going to go back to the beginning of the line. You'll notice in the lower left hand corner of my screen it started showing the word recording as soon as I started the macro. I'm still recording right now, but I'm done with the work that I want to do, so I'm going to type Q again. Recording is stopped. Now let's look at register A. You can see there's text in there along with a couple of uh, control characters, and that is the sequence of commands that I just typed in to do my uh, search and replace. So now I've got a register that I can execute run it as a macro, and I said that I wanted to replace the first five instances of play in this file, or first five instances of work with play. I've already do done one, so let's say I'm going to execute four times the contents of register A. And as you can see when I was typing, I typed the number of times that I wanted to execute it. Let's do it three more times here followed by at sign and then the name of the register. So that's how you can record macros. Something that I didn't mention before is um, registers can also be referenced by capital A through Z. When you do that it's a pointer to the same registers A through Z except instead of clobbering the contents of the register you're appending to it. So let's say that we had my little macro before and let's look at it in register A. It searches with a forward slash for work and then changes the word to play and then I'm done. Uh, let's say that I wanted to change work to play and then also change registers to Vim. So I can start with the work that I've already done but I'm going to make a little addition here. So I'm going to say Q and then Shift A so that I'm appending to the register and search for, for registers and then change that to Vim. And I'm done. So if I execute the value of register A now, you can see that it should search forward for work, change the word to play, then search forward for registers and change the word to vim. So it should be safe to run it from this line right here and get the results that I want. Let's turn off highlighting first and then say run A. And there you have it. So I hope this is informative and keep watching. I'll be bringing some more vim videos uh, to YouTube soon. Thanks.